Hello everyone, it's been a while. Thank you so much for watching. For being accompanied by my lovely diva cat, Jackie. She's fabulous, isn't she? Um, so, I hope you guys are all doing well um, in the current circumstances of a worldwide pandemic. I hope you guys are being all safe and uh, take um, the right um, decisions in everyday life and avoid COVID-19. Um, so the thing I want to talk about today is family and Jehovah's Witnesses. Because uh, I don't know how long I will be talking about this because uh, I just came back from a, a lunch with my lovely ex-colleagues from my previous job and um, in about an hour I have to go to the I have an appointment at the physiotherapist I guess it's called because I have a bad back so she needs to do some work on that yeah I, I know you, you like the attention come here, come here so I actually want to talk about um, my Jehovah's Witness family without, um, how you call it, exposing anyone's identity or whatever. So I'm going to be very um, neutral. I'm not going to say any names. But um, I've heard a lot of stories from a lot of um, uh, XJWs who are raised in this very Jehovah's Witness um, um this very harsh Jehovah's Witness environment, like in their family, and they had a hard time coming out of the organization because they would lose everything near and dear to them and everyone. So, but, um, so I was thinking, and <laughs> chill the hell out, please, just go here. Um, so I was like thinking, and uh, I've come to the conclusion that I really never had this extreme behavior in my family so let's start from the beginning um my mom was a i believe third generation witness because her parents were uh, jo jehovah's witnesses and my grandmother's parents as well i think but no one in all these three generations was really fanatical Jehovah's Witness and I guess the fanaticism or actually lack of fanaticism did rub off on the next generation let me tell you how um, because my mom used to tell me stories that she has this memory of her grandfather that he would pick her um, uh, flowers for her name day and in Poland where my family comes from uh, they have like birthdays but also name days so Everyone has their name day once a year, maybe twice a year. I really don't know if it's if it's the same date every year. I'm not into those kind of customs because I've um, I lived here in the Netherlands since I was five. So um, yeah, those customs aren't very familiar to me. Um, but name days are a thing, and. Um, so my mom's grandfather used to pick flowers for her and put her put the flowers on her nightstand and she has fond memories of that kind of stuff. And that her grandfather would be, uh, I don't know, also kind of generous or give her money and grandmother was a little bit greedy, <laughs> something like that. And I was like, what? But they were witnesses, right? So witnesses don't celebrate anything, anything. They uh, have a memorial of Christ's death but they don't celebrate like traditionals. They celebrate like uh, weddings and wedding anniversaries. And maybe when someone, um, I call it, um, graduates from high school, maybe. Maybe graduations they celebrate. And maybe if someone uh, gets a new job or housewarming, stuff like that. But not the, the traditional stuff, like besides weddings. So I found that very strange because Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate any name days in Poland, as far as I know. Nor do they celebrate their birthdays, as is custom to the Jehovah's Witnesses. So I 
I found that very odd, actually. And I really don't know how um, um, how active my mom's grandparents were as Jehovah's Witnesses. I have no idea, really. But um, then we come to my grandparents on my mother's side. Um, and when I ask my mom about it, she tells me her mother never went into field service, which is kind of strange. Because as Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, as Jehovah's Witness, you have to go into field service. That's actually a minimum requirement for being a Jehovah's Witness, right? So I really don't know how she got baptized or under what circumstances. Um, so I found that really strange. I don't know if my grandmother was an inactive witness. Or maybe they saw her as spiritually weak in the congregation. Because... Yeah, maybe the difference is very big between the United States of America and Europe, for instance. Um, or maybe it's just Poland. I, I don't know. Because um, where I come from, so it's eastern Poland, there's a lot of um, farms and people are farmers. And being a farmer takes up a lot of your time. Especially in summer when um, when stuff has to be harvested. You cannot just say, well... We'll leave it till tomorrow. It can wait. Now we go to um, to the meetings or into field service. No, stuff has to be done. Because tomorrow it may be raining or, um, I don't know, other weather circumstances might um, ruin the harvest. And you cannot just wait until you've got time. So um, being a farmer is quite intensive work. And my grandparents were basically farmers. And they didn't have this huge farm, um, but, they had, but they had um, a couple of uh, acres of land, I guess, with, um, I don't know, I don't know how it's called in English. Like, they had that stuff growing that you can make into oil, as in cooking oil um but i guess also it's a it's a part of fuel i don't know they also had like stuff that is being used uh, for clothing for fabrics so they were farmers and uh, they had to um, do a lot of work um and my grandfather he died in 2000 and six and my grandmother is still alive and she will be 90 this year so um that's a spectacular age really to be 90 and uh, she lived all through the second world war and um communism and that kind of stuff hey, don't walk in front of the camera please just sit in one place please just stay here so, um, the thing is, um, they were busy a lot. So, I suppose that's why there wasn't any time for field service or pioneering or that kind of stuff. Um, and I really don't know what the circumstances were back then when my grandmother was baptized. Or if she really did have a reason, like, oh, this is the truth. I don't know. I really don't know. And I don't think I can ask her because she's, she hasn't got dementia, I guess. But she's, she's getting old. So her memory isn't that good anymore, I guess. Um, and my grandfather, yeah, with him it was the same, actually. But uh, my grandfather got to know the truth later on in life. And he got baptized and um, eventually they got married. I guess that's how the story goes. And... Um, they were quite old when they got married because my grandmother was 30 and my grandfather was 34, I guess. So in that time, it was very old to get married. Must have been 1960 or something like that. So uh, my mom and her brothers never really got this example of how to be an exemplary Jehovah's Witness with all the pioneering and all the ministry school stuff and um, my mom 
she's got two younger brothers, they're twins, and one older brother. And the oldest brother, uh, he he never got baptized. He never became one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Mm, I guess I've heard that he sometimes just visits a memorial once a year. More as a tradition, I guess, than um, as a believer. And he married um, uh, this very sweet lady who was my aunt. I, I don't see, see her very often because they live in Canada with their two sons. I've been there only once. Um, but my aunt is, is a lovely lady and she's very sweet. So um, then you have my youngest uncles. Um, they were probably baptized when they were 20 or something. And my mom was 16. And my uncles, that's a kind of a crazy story. Well, it's not really crazy, but um, it's not very unusual that um, um, more generations of families live in the same house. And my uncles never really did get married. Not at a young age, at least. So, they have been living with their parents since forever. And one of my uncles just, he got married like three years ago. And basically moved out to live with his wife in their apartment. And the other one still lives with his mother. And currently he actually uh, is working in Belgium. So he doesn't live live there right now. But it, it's his home. So, But it's kind of kind of strange because... They had these privileges in the congregation. And the congregation there is like really small. Very tiny kingdom hall. It's uh, in the middle of nowhere basically. So a lot of old people there. One of my uncles got married when he was around 48. Or something like that. And you all know how um, strict the Jehovah's Witnesses are with um, sexuality and... Like being intimate with other people. And I just, I know it's not my business and I would rather not think about it. But it's kind of hard for me to um, to think that both of my uncles like are still like pure <laughs> or were in the case of my married uncle until the age of 48. And I know that his brother who is not married, he has had a, had a lot of girlfriends who are Jehovah's Witnesses still, but um, yeah, I don't believe as a as a grown man, like in your thirties, forties, you're going only to hold hands with this girl, you know. And I don't know if um, um, if it's the custom in Poland to get married as soon as possible, and that people um, have a very short engagement and. When they're in a relationship, it's expected of you that you get married. I don't know if that's the case, really. But people tend to get married very young, as Joe Swins is over there as well. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of strange, isn't it? And no one ever said anything about that. I mean, yeah, there were other people, like, in the congregation, like elders and ministerial servants. And no one, well, people like to make fun of it. Like, oh, when are you going to get married? But no one... I was like, yeah, you have these girlfriends, nothing happened, or... I don't know, and of course, it's my opinion that it's none of your damn business what other people do in their free time, in the bedroom, wherever. But um, still kind of strange. Also, they were... Well, I, I won't say they had kind of loose morals, but my uncles are like... I don't know, they like to drink sometimes, and sometimes a lot, you know, as it's uh, not very strange in Poland. My family isn't very fanatical when it comes to um, living by the rules of the Jehovah's Witnesses or the standards but they are like they always like go to meetings because my both of my uncles they weren't farmers so usually they don't miss any meetings go to the con um, to the conventions and stuff so that's actually uh, as far as it goes for my family in Poland so my mom she moved to the Netherlands because she uh, met her now husband, who's my stepdad. Um, that was in 1995. Maybe I've mentioned this already, but my mom was disfellowshipped for having me. She wasn't married, and my dad wasn't a Jehovah's Witness either. He was a Muslim, though. 
Um, and I asked her about it because I always try to get more of the story, you know, like I want to know what really happened there. And because I've heard a lot of stories about judicial committees when it comes to getting this fellowship for fornication and that um, elders asked really inappropriate questions. So I was wondering if the same happened to my mom and she told me no, because there wasn't a judicial committee. Um, from the way I understood it, they just called her up and told her she was disfellowshipped. So there was no trial, nothing. And uh, she was fine with that at the moment, I guess. Although I really never understand why she returned to the organization. Like people threw her out like garbage. And then she's like, well, yeah, I'm going to return. Why would you do that? Well, that's a story for another time, maybe. Some Stockholm Syndrome there, maybe. Um, so we moved to the Netherlands in 95. And uh, she came into contact with some Jehovah's Witnesses. And then she came back to the meetings. I don't know if she really officially was reinstated or whatever. If she even, if they even knew that she was this fellowship. But you get stigmatized when people know that shit. I mean, even if you're reinstated, you never lose. Um, you always have this um, this stigma, you know, like it's written on your forehead. I, I'm a sinner or something, right? Um, and people will judge you for that all the time, every time. So. Um, so she came back and I really don't have a lot of recollection from the time uh, if my mom was a fanatic, but I guess she uh, became more fanatic when I left or not really when I left, but more when I decided not to go to the meetings anymore. And it wasn't not really a conscious decision, but I, I just stopped going when I moved out, um, when I um, moved to this city where I live now currently to study, to get higher education. Um, I just stopped going to meetings because I didn't miss it at all. And I really didn't care for it. And it just took a lot of time. I didn't have time for that stuff. Or I didn't want to make any time for that stuff, to be honest. And she never pushed me really. Um, but she went into field service, I guess. I did as well till the age of, let's say, 17, 18. And um, we went to the conventions. Um, yeah, sometimes I tried to squirrel my way out of the meeting. <laughs> like saying, yeah, I'm just tired. I'll go after the, the, the public talk when the watchtower will begin. And she was very often like, why would you do that? Just stay here and uh, stop whining. Um, but when I stopped going, it must have been in 2008, nine. Um, mm, afterwards, until, up until 2016, I only went to the memorial once a year. Um, but I guess she, she became a little bit more fanatic. She went into the field service way often, more often than usual. And I was like, is she compensating because I'm not going to the meetings anymore and I'm not going into field service? Um, and the reason I went into field service in the first place was because of uh, people who asked me to and I really couldn't refuse them or I didn't know how to make up an excuse to not to go. I didn't really enjoy it myself, really, because I knew where my classmates lived and people from school and they'll be laughing and making fun of me and I already was a target of bullying at school, so that wasn't fun. So, my mom, when it comes to the traditional stuff, let me think of some situations. When, um, when I was young, let's say 14, I had this poster up on my wall of Atomic Kitten. I don't know if anyone knows this band. It's a band of like three ladies. It was very hot, those kind of girl groups <laughs> in 2003, 4, whatever. Uh, and I had this poster up on the wall. And, and it was a very decent photo. No one was naked with their boobs hanging out or whatever. But um, one of the girls had this necklace and it was a very small cross as a pendant. And my mom saw that and she took like, she just took a pen and she just scratched out the little cross. I can remember that very vividly. And I'm like, 
now that I'm thinking of it, like, did this really happen? That's just crazy, right? Who does that? Um, and when it comes to, like, entertainment, mm, my mom wasn't, she didn't really care. And my stepfather has never been Jehovah's Witness, so he doesn't care at all. Um, I really enjoyed horror movies um, and Harry Potter movies, and my mom never really told me not to watch them. I watched them. I watched the first four of them. I watched with my best friend at the at the movies, so that was great. Um, so, yeah, sometimes when I got gifts, it was Harry Potter themed, so that was really cool. I had the sticker book and all these magnets and all kind of super cool stuff. So, like, wizardry and spiritual, uh, or how you call it, spiritistic stuff was never an issue. They didn't care. Um, also, type of music that I was listening to wasn't an issue. Because back then, I didn't really listen to very extreme music. Um, yeah, I listened mostly to pop music. And uh, I started to discover stuff like Within Temptation. Which is a great Dutch band though. Great, great, great. I saw them live once. They were awesome. So, that was an issue. Um, yeah, um, when it comes to boys, that was maybe an issue. But most mostly because my mom had this, um, had this experience of being kind of shunned by her family. Because she got me, she wasn't... Um, married and she was stigmatized by the whole village so that was horrible so she was always actually very afraid for me that i would fall pregnant and um which didn't happen because um yeah it just didn't happen so um she was kind of strict when it came to holidays because uh since i'm 14 i guess i went on holiday by myself like with the bus or um, on the plane to Poland and uh, I would be there for five six weeks like the whole vacation I would enjoy myself and occasionally have these boyfriends on holiday and my mom knew their families because they were jokes with as well so um, my first boyfriend uh, his mom and my mom went way way back so um, but I maybe now I understand why a parent would be very um, uh, afraid that something might happen. But at that time, I mean, I was 14. I mean, what could happen really? Or just holding hands, maybe kissing a little bit. I mean, I don't know. Maybe kids nowadays do a lot of stuff. But then I, I wasn't there yet, so to say. I wasn't um, thinking about those kind of things. So I just found it very un. Uh, exciting to have a boyfriend and stuff so um, so nothing could have happened really and um, my mom have, has always been kind of very afraid if um, that I would come back home pregnant or whatever although she always told me that she would never kick me out like her mom basically did and I'm like I don't even like kids I don't even want kids don't you think I would be doing everything not to have kids I mean what are these people thinking, right? I never want kids ever since I was young. I, I didn't care for that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, she was very strict in that, um, in that department. Also, there wasn't any sex education. I had to learn that from school, though. Although I wasn't really surprised, um, yeah, about stuff. Uh, from the when it comes to the human body and stuff because we learn a lot in school and the Dutch sex education system is quite all right we don't have these abstinence only sex education it's uh it, it's enough I mean uh, in the Netherlands it's it's very um we have a very culture of very free morals really so there are no taboos um yeah so that's the department in which we she was most fanatic i guess and when it comes to birthdays as a kid i did celebrate my birthday before i went with my mom to the kingdom hall because um there was a certain age a certain point um at the age of 10 11 
when I was just curious where my mom was going all the time to the Bible study. So I want to go with her. And since then I just went with her. It just became a thing. And my mom never did tell me like birthdays are not allowed or something. I mean, I had parties, birthday parties. And I actually didn't find them that great because um, I wasn't very good at entertaining people then. So um, it was more of a drag really. So I didn't really mind to not have birthday parties or birth celebrate birthdays at all. Yeah, when I went to the meetings and there were talks or Watchtower articles about how birthday celebrations are bad. I got actually kind of brainwashed or maybe I brainwashed myself with these thoughts that um, I shouldn't celebrate birthdays. And then I, I became very fanatic when it comes to birthdays. But if I would have wanted to celebrate my birthday... I don't think my mom would have made a big fuss out of it. Um, I guess other people in the congregation um, would have, if they would have known. But I didn't celebrate it because I would have feel guilty afterwards, which is totally BS, we now know, of course. One time that I, I guess I turned 18 or maybe 16 was then, and um, there was this little bottle of white wine. In the in the refrigerator, and I was like, "What is this?" And my mom, "Yeah, it's for you because you've turned seventeen or something." I was like, "What the hell? We don't celebrate birthdays." And I was kind of offended, and I feel still cringe right now when I think of it because my mom just meant well, and I just scolded her for it, and oh, it was just terrible. And when I turned twenty-two, my mom made me this collage. I guess it's called collage, and there was a photo of me in the middle. I have it hanging in my bathroom and around the edge were all photos of me and I don't know if it was really from the age of one, two, three and, and so on. Uh, but she made this collage, she cut out photos and she made this like text like a diploma for um, between brackets bad behavior or 22 years bad behavior. Like greetings, your mom, sister, dad, something like that. So actually it was like Happy birthday, but not really happy birthday, because this is just a, a certificate for behavior. Like, that's ridiculous, like, as in she wants to congratulate me, but she didn't because it's not allowed by eight men in New York. That's kind of crazy, right? And it makes me keep hope for my mom that she one day will wake up or something, because she isn't really that kind of a fanatic. And if she was really, really this super jade up, she wouldn't have any contact with me because you're not supposed to have contact with your kids who don't want the truth. And um, same with uh, with this childhood friend of mine. He lives with his mom. He never wants to be baptized. He doesn't care. But his sister, she was baptized. And then she was um, disfellowshipped. And only because her grandpa just wanted to have contact with her again, they actually um, coerced her maybe to get reinstated and then she went inactive so maybe she is bad hey, why don't you just don't maybe she is bad association but it's not forbidden to associate with her so these are these crazy loopholes that Jehovah's Witnesses like to um, like to use to have contact with their family and I'm like you always you can always have contact with your family members just because Eight old geezers in New York don't allow you to have contact with your family. Like, screw them, right? So, my mom never was that way. And she always tells me, like, yeah, when I see this fellowship people, I just greet them. I mean, I'm not going to look the other way or something. That's strange. Um, when my stepdad's mom died, it was asked from us to light some candles or whatever. My mom wouldn't do that because it's symbolize the uh, how you call it the immortal spirit or something of a person which she doesn't believe in so yeah that she wouldn't do or maybe go to birthdays she also wouldn't do that so I'm actually quite happy that my mom doesn't shun me um, that we have contact on a regular basis although we don't have this mother-daughter relationship as it has to be I would have I would like to have a completely different relationship with her but um, I don't know. I don't, didn't really have a great childhood. And now we get along well. 
because we're both adults. But that was completely different when I was a teenager. So I'm really happy that I didn't grow up in a family of fanatics who pressured me into doing stuff that I didn't want to. Nobody ever pressured me to get baptized or to still stay active really when I moved out or even when I didn't come to the memorial my mom didn't even um, uh, invite me anymore because she knew that I wouldn't come and um, she respects that I guess and I don't think she thinks less of me because I am um, I'm not religious anymore and that's a blessing in one way you know because it could have been worse I hope one day she'll wake up from this uh, horrible controlling cult and then we can uh, I don't know watch like John Cedars YouTube together or whatever maybe is that that's that would be a dream but um, for now I'm uh, I guess I don't know sometimes a little bit conflicted in the way that my family wasn't really fanatical when it comes to the religion but actually I'm also very happy because no one will ever shun me uh, or have has ever shunned me so that's a good thing um i like to hear about your stories about your family how they treated you or if you did see your family as fanatics as radicals uh or were they also a little bit like chill about the truth let me know in the comments and um for now thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed my story when it comes to family and being a jehovah's witness and um you'll see me next time in the next video thank you for watching and have a great day bye